Space Beat, powered by the USA Today Florida Network. Huntsville, Alabama will be the new home of U.S. Space Command after President Trump overturns yet another Biden administration policy. NASA has a new advanced launch control center ready for Artemis II. And is it an alien ship or just a comet? NASA is pointing multiple instruments at the interstellar object known as 3i Atlas. Hey, everybody, I'm your host, Rob Landers, and those are the stories that I will be discussing this week with USA Today space reporter Eric Legata. Eric, welcome to the studio. Hey, Rob, thank you for having me. Uh, of course. All right, so uh, it's been kind of a busy week. Uh, you got to team up on a story yesterday with my buddy Zach Anderson from another show I produce called Inside Florida Politics. He used to be the host. He's now, uh, he's now off in Trump world. Uh, let's talk about... Uh, Trump's decision to to move U.S. Space Command, like what what is going on? Because I thought we were set on keeping it in Colorado Springs. Yeah, um, and it seems like this has been, you know, a years long tussle between um, Democrats and Republicans um, to, to get to get uh, um, the headquarters for Space Command um, in their state. So this is something that um, obviously in Trump's first term, uh, he, he uh, reestablished Space Command and and uh, you know along with with establishing space force and um, it w had been based in Colorado Springs um, on an interim basis but uh, during Biden's administration uh, then President Joe Biden um, opted to make Colorado Springs the permanent headquarters for Space Command so Trump's decision is, is effectively a reversal of, of that Biden era decision now moving the permanent headquarters for Space Command to Huntsville Alabama um, and this is also where Trump had initially wanted to have it anyway um, it, so um, it's also kind of a, a revival of, of his original plan in the first place as well yeah so okay for um for for people who who are just you know like they just like watching rockets take off what what is space command like what 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 do they do yeah so basically i mean space, space command is is just tasked with um commanding military operations um essentially above earth's atmosphere so um that's about 60 miles high or higher um and uh you know so so they're in charge of you know kind of monitoring um u.s satellites and um protecting um u.s you know interests up up above in space um and uh you know obviously also you know defending u.s satellites from potential threats that would that would be the easiest way to sum up what what space command is all about so it kind of differs from space force space force is like an actual military service branch not unlike the army or the navy so that's that's kind of how those two differentiate i like to liken space force to the marines like the marines were an offshoot of the navy space force is now an offshoot of air force so if you if you look at it that way it's kind of a an easy explanation for for how those those kind of interact and work together Okay, so we've got multiple multiple space centers across across the the nation, right? We've we've got one in Ohio, we've got one in in Virginia, we've got one in in Alabama, of course. We've got one in Mississippi. We of course have have Johnson in in Texas. Why Alabama? Yeah, I, I think Alabama has always kind of built itself as as you know the quote unquote rocket city, and I know that's something that that Trump mentioned too um, in announcing this yesterday is that you know uh, you know going forward Huntsville will will be known as Rocket City. So you know Huntsville has a strong history of you know being being integral to the you know U.S. space flight uh, specifically with the Apollo missions. Um, back in the 60s and 70s and designing some of the spacecraft that were used for that. And um, they also are home to NASA's Marshall Space Flight Center as well. Um, and, and then, you know, out, outside of, you know, the, the government, there's a lot of um, private entities and aerospace um, companies like Boeing and Lockheed Martin um, that, that have a presence in Huntsville as well. Um, so so th there is a lot to recommend um, Huntsville as, as a location for this. And I know that when the Air Force was conducting a study a few years ago, it was actually th they, they had listed it as their preferred site as well. So when is all of this supposed to happen? Like when when are the big moves supposed to start happening with this? 
I, I'm not sure that, that we have an exact timeline. I've, I've seen some reports out there that this is expected to take a few years um, to, to get this operational. Um, so I'm not sure, you know, beyond that, what the exact timeline would be. So enough time for, say, another administration to come along and decide that they want to just leave it in Colorado Springs. You never know. <laughs> no. All right. Well, let's shift gears here. Uh, speaking of space centers, um, Johnson Space Center in Houston has now gotten a, uh, a brand new shiny toy. Uh, let's talk about the Artemis Launch Control Center. Yes. Um, very cool news. This is this comes as uh, NASA is, you know, getting pretty excited to um, get this Artemis 2 mission off the ground, potentially in 2026. Um, you know, preparations are underway. This would be the, the first um, moon mission with astronauts, um, obviously, since the last Apollo mission in 1972. Um, and while Artemis 2 isn't going to be targeting a moon landing itself, they would go, they would go around the moon um, during a 10 day mission and come back to Earth. Um, so obviously it's going to take a lot of, of, of infrastructure and technology here on Earth to, to monitor such a mission, especially with humans aboard to make sure it goes safely. And so that's that's what this, this new um, um, evaluation room is all about. So th this is something NASA kind of introduced publicly um, in August. And it's they're they're calling it the Orion Mission Evaluation Room. So Orion being the name of the actual capsule that the that four astronauts will be aboard next year um, for for this Artemis two mission. Okay, so you can uh, you you can actually see the the old like launch control centers uh, at at on any of the tours. I I think at either or Johnson or at Kennedy Space Center where you know you have these massive computers. What is different about the Launch Control Center now, which I feel like this is a really stupid question, but I'm going to ask it anyway. What is different about the Launch Control Center in Houston for, for Orion as opposed to the Launch Control Center for Apollo? I don't know that I could answer that specifically, um, but but what I can say is obviously this is going to be a lot more advanced. I think that goes without saying this will be a pretty advanced um, evaluation center. And, you know, that. So from what NASA has released, it's it's going to have 24 consoles that should be staffed 24-7 um, during the mission itself. And uh, essentially what, what this evaluation room is all about is that they'll, they'll be kind of, it sounds like they will be um, kind of working with the, the flight control team who will be in the actual flight control room and in, in mission control in Houston um, and, and basically providing them with um, you know, data or information that will help the, the flight control team make decisions about the 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 um, spacecraft's operations um, during the 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 space flight itself. Okay. All right. So, uh, I mean, uh, and obviously, we we you know we know that it, it, that technology has advanced. I mean, your your iPhone has more computing power than all of the computers that were on uh, Apollo Eleven. So. Mm -hmm. Um, obviously, there would be some technical advances in the <clears throat> fifty some odd fifty fifty three <laughs> years uh, since uh, since the last Apollo mission. Uh, okay, so let's uh, let's let's finally get to uh, the the weird and bizarre kind of conspiracy theories that are circling around Three I Atlas. Uh, you recently wrote a story that uh, after Hubble snapped an image of of the the interstellar object. Um, NASA has now pointed the James Webb Telescope and another observatory called Sphere X at the uh, the instrument. What or at the object? What what is going on here? What's what's going on with this thing? Yeah, so so this this is the uh, interstellar object um, that's made a lot of headlines uh, recently since I believe July um, because it's it's regarded as the third ever object from out side our solar system that we've ever been able to observe coming into our solar system. Um, so it's a, kind of a big deal. Um, and so astronomers are and, and the world space agencies are very interested in this object and getting a getting a, a, a good look at it um, because they just don't have an opportunity to to study, you know, planetary material that comes from outside our solar system very often. Um, so obviously, like it doesn't pose any sort of threat to Earth or anything like that, um, but it's just it's just a very um, intriguing object for for scientists to to kind of learn more about our universe and figure out you know um, you know where this where this came from, how old it is, and um, and that sort of thing. 
Okay. Now I've, I've read, it should probably stay off the internet when, when, when you're looking for facts about things, but um, I, I've read that uh, it's generating its own lights. It has unnatural lights like uh, coming off of it, uh, that it is an, uh, an interstellar alien outpost coming to observe us. Um, what, what are scientists actually saying about this thing? Like what, what, what do they know at this point? I, I think that that uh, yeah, obviously, anytime there's there's an interesting object like this, there's a lot of uh, people are bound to 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 make theories, have their own theories, and have all kinds of wild ideas about what they would like it to be. I think that from what I've seen, the overwhelming um, scientific consensus is that this is almost certainly a comet. It, ex it exhibits all the signs of a comet. Um, and and that's what it is. And it, it really, what's the big deal about it, like I said, is just that, you know, it's probably really old, a lot older than our own sun, probably. And, um, you know, that just makes it really interesting for scientists to, 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 to study further. Um, you know, I think I think probably one of the biggest theories, though, that did gain traction um, came from a Harvard astrophysicist um, who's, who's who's been known to, you know, kind of make um, you know, claims and theories before about extraterrestrial visitors, uh, some of which have been debunked. Um, but, you know, he, he kind of posed more as a thought experiment than an actual theory that what if this was an alien spacecraft? Like, let's not rule that out. Let's, let's ha you know, maintain that, um, that idea that it could be that. Um, but even he, I don't think was necessarily sold on that, that, uh, you know, idea. I think it was more just, he kind of proposed it as something like, you know, as a what if, and it's fun to think about, um, but it's probably not that. Um, so like I say, it's, you know, the consensus is that it's cert almost certainly a comet. <laughs> so, so we're just talking like a big chunk of ice, right? That would be my understanding. I think that's my understanding what a comet is. Yep. <laughs> yeah, that's okay. And then, well, and also, I mean, this is going to, on its closest approach, this will be I think I read in your story 130 million miles away from Earth. Yeah. So um, later in October, I think by October 30th, um, the, 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 uh, the, uh, my understanding is that this object will come about, uh, whiz about 130 miles per hour relative to the sun that will, on a trajectory that will bring it within about 130 million miles of Earth. And so I think that that's about the closest it's going to get up. Uh, a short 130 million miles away. <laughs> right. Okay. So if if I want to observe Earth and and life on Earth, I think I might get a little closer. I mean, we have asteroids that come closer to us than that. Um, <laughs> which I mean, which I'm sure we'll talk about in the uh, in in coming episodes of of Space Beat. But but that that seems a little distant. Plus, okay, I I, I got to ask this question. So how do we get three I Atlas? for this one. And the last interstellar object that came through was Umau Mau. Like, <laughs> how do we get that big of a difference in naming? That is a good question. I would love to know the answer to that. That might be a, a good idea for a future story because um, audience interest in this, in this comet is relatively high. So I'm sure that would be a really interesting question to answer for them. <laughs> well, I mean, 3i Atlas, I get it. It's the third interstellar object that we've recorded. It was it was captured by the Atlas telescope that's it, or part of the, the Atlas system with the telescope in Chile. That I get. Umau Mau? Like... <laughs> Anyway, <laughs> maybe maybe it'll get it. Maybe there'll be a nickname for it that'll stick. That'll be a lot more easier to pronounce and more fun to pronounce. <laughs> I mean, I mean, Umau Mau is fun to pronounce. So, yeah. um, <laughs> and Three Eye Atlas is so much bigger than than Umau Mau. Like, so anyway, but um, all right, Eric. Anything else we need to talk about? No, I think that covered everything pretty good. All right. Well, uh, again, as as always, thank you for uh, for doing what you do without uh, you out covering your space topics along with your counterparts, Rick Neal and Brooke Edwards. This show would not be possible. So thanks again for everything you do for the USA Today Network and our readers. Absolutely. And I'm always happy to join you to talk about it. It's fun. Thank you. Okay. So that's going to wrap up another episode of Space Beat. Uh, be sure to hit the like and subscribe button so you never miss one of our space videos. We'll see you next week.